welcome to my best of the year series. I do these every January where I look back on the past year, in this case, 2022, and talk about my absolute favorites. So today we're gonna talk drugstore makeup. I have so many to chat about. I was gonna do drugstore and high-end all in the same video. You guys voted on Instagram for me to split it up because it was a lot of makeup. So that's what we're doing. I am wearing my, I think my entire face for the most part is all award winners. I used to call these the Jammy Awards because my screen name used to be Jam Beauty 89 I don't know if I'm actually gonna put that in the title this year or not. I'm so far removed from that screen name that at this point I feel like most people don't get it. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's dive in. All right, so you'll get to see me applying as many of these as I could today. So let's kind of go in order of face. Uh, first up is primer. And there was one clear winner this year. I've watched a lot of year end favorites of like my favorite YouTubers and a lot of people had this in theirs as well. There's a good reason. It is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. If you've been dragging your feet on this, trust me, it's as good as the hype is saying it is. It really is, I think, I mean, it's absolutely a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury one with this big doe foot wand. I think it might be better. The big difference between this and the Charlotte Tilbury one is that this one provides a little bit of coverage. It's kind of interesting. I hadn't really noticed it until Taylor Wynn had pointed it out and she's right. It really does. You can see me applying it right now. It really does kind of provide a little bit of coverage, which is cool because if you're using it as a primer, as I did and do, I feel like it's nice when it's already covering some of what you might have wanted to cover up anyway. So love the glow that this gives. I feel like you can always see it shine through just a little bit in the foundation and mm, it is it is that good. The shade I wear, by the way, is shade one fair. It's actually still a little deeper than my skin, but when it's blended on, it doesn't matter, but it's so, so pretty. An A++ on this nice glass packaging elf. And I also love the color of the lid. All right, so two foundations. One of them is this one from number seven. It's their Restore and Renew. So this is a serum foundation. It's not super liquidy like a lot of serum foundations I've tried. This one feels more like a traditional foundation, which I think is why I really like it. Because a lot of serum-y, super liquidy ones, I just, I don't tend to like that style. I don't know what it is, but anyway. This one is so pretty. So I'm wearing this one today. It definitely was kind of a little too glowy when I paired it with the e.l.f. glowy stuff. So there's that to keep in mind, but this on its own is just so pretty. I don't think you need anything glowy underneath it because of just the finish of it on its own. This is not gonna be high, high coverage. It's kind of light medium or medium, as I've said, and it just looks like really nice skin. I really feel like when I'm wearing this, this is a foundation I trust to be wearing when I'm up close with someone because it just looks good. You know what I mean? It looks good up close. So like I said, medium coverage and just a really pretty, very natural finish to the skin. Number seven, you can get at Walgreens, Target online. I don't know if Target, I don't know. Either way, um, you can definitely find it. I order mine online. And if you're curious, I wear the shade number one calico. By the way, this does have sunscreen SPF 20, if you were curious. I have one other foundation from the drugstore I loved. It's the NYX Born to Glow foundation. I'll pop a picture on the screen because I don't know where it is. <laughs> I think it might be in my makeup collection. I must have, while I was weeding through it, didn't see it. But I absolutely love that stuff. It is so... If I were blindfolded and put that on, I would have thought it was a high-end foundation. It is so absolutely beautiful. It's kind of in like an unassuming squeezy tube bottle, but there's something about the medium coverage, the like slightly glowy finish. It is so, so beautiful. So if you can find a good shade match for yourself, that is just like mm, top, top tier. And if I were picking between that foundation and this one, they are different. This one has a little bit lighter coverage, a little more natural looking. I think I would pick the NYX one if you were just trying one of them. Try the NYX one, it's so good. So I also have uh, two concealers to talk about. So the one I'm wearing today, this was a Jammy Award winner last year too. It's the Catrice True Skin Concealer. You can get this on Amazon. Catrice used to be sold at Ulta, it's no longer. But it's like $7 on Amazon. I think all of the shades are there. I wear the shade number 10, Cool Cashmere. I don't know what it is about this concealer. I love the application of it, like the flexible brush. It's so just like cushy when you apply it. And I can't explain it other than that. It's just so cushy and just, 
Mm. It blends in so easily and beautifully and even. I I just absolutely love this. There's a reason it won last year as well. When I thought about my favorite concealer, this was the very first one I thought of. I just, I love it so much. It's so good. It also says it's waterproof. I've not tested that theory, but you know, maybe it is. I, I certainly have cried with this on, I'm sure. So I don't know. Another favorite is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. So this does not have wildly high coverage. It does have nice coverage though. Like I, I, I don't like to mess with concealers that have very, very little coverage. Cause I'm like, what are we doing then? Why am I even applying this? Um, so I feel like this still does, but it does have a little bit lighter of a consistency when you compare it to the Catrice one. Um, it's just a little bit thinner. It does have like a little pump. Um, you pump out and then I'll typically just kind of apply it with my finger. Um, it's just, it's really nice. I feel like, again, this is a concealer that looks pretty up close. It can still have good coverage. Like you can see that's covering a good amount. I would say maybe like medium coverage. I don't know that you could layer more on top. I, but I typically will use a powder on top of my concealer no matter what anyway, just to set it. And a lot of times my favorites in that realm will kind of add just a slight amount of coverage as well. So they, it works really well with both of these two. I have the shade light in this one. So my favorite under eye powder I forgot to bring as well is the number seven Lift and Luminate. That has been an award winner for years. It is such a beautiful under eye powder. If you're already placing like a number seven order from wherever, the powder I would recommend even more. It is so wonderful for the under eye. I don't use it all over the face. I think it would work fine. I just, I just don't, I don't know. I, I view that as an under eye powder. It's so blurring and smoothing in that area. I've repurchased that so many times. It is a top tier product. By the way, if you are into drugstore makeup and stuff, I'm, I'm assuming you are if you're watching this, I do a lot of drugstore dupe videos, kind of like every month, every other month here on my channel. So if you like it, subscribe, stick around. I do a lot of drugstore makeup stuff anyways. I got my nails done today, so I feel like talking. <laughs> so another powder that I can't find. I know one of mine shattered and then I bought another one and I think the shade I bought was wrong. So maybe I've already gotten rid of it. So I need to order it again in the right shade. The e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation is one of the only powder foundations I've tried recently that I've been like, oh my gosh, because not only does it have coverage, but it is so smoothing. It is so impossibly smoothing. Like it just, it really is like next level. And every time I use it, like that's one that I'll I was gonna say I'll usually have in my purse. Now I'm like, wait, is it in my purse? It might be. But anyway, it is so, so beautiful. It is so smoothing. That is the kind of powder foundation I could put a sunscreen on and then just with a dense brush, apply that powder foundation everywhere and it looks like I have the most beautiful foundation on. Like it's just so, so good. So definitely, definitely worth it. So anyway, if you're looking at e.l.f. products, the Halo Glow, the Camo Powder Foundation, Mm. Let's talk eyeshadow. So the standout drugstore palette for me, there's two of them. I have one that I like more, but would be the Wet n Wild Always Naked and the Always Blushing line. Always Naked is the one I reach for the most just based on the colors. It's what I'm wearing today. I'm someone that I just like kind of more of a wash of color and, and I always love shimmer all over the lid. Like it's just my favorite look on myself. So today I used this shade here and just basically put it everywhere. And then I used a little bit of one of these matte shades in the crease. I used that same matte shade kind of on my lower lash line. It's just beautiful. So many of these shadows are perfect for like one eyeshadow looks, which is what I tend to do day, day to day, you know? Um, the Always Blushing is really pretty. Actually, let me show you these side by side open. If you were wanting to get one and not the other. Very similar vibes, obviously. One is just more those like rosy blush tones. I love it. The glitters in them will get everywhere like that one and that one. I've tried to mess with, I just wouldn't. <laughs> These are just so, so good and I would recommend the Always Naked one the most. It was hard for me to find that. I'm trying to think of, did I end up finding it on Amazon? So if you're struggling to find it, I've never seen it in store anywhere. Um, let me know if you have, but yeah. Mm. And then a quick shout out to the Essence Little Six Pans. This is the Nothing Compares to Nude. This is the Coral Me Maybe. I use the nude one the most, but honestly, I feel like none of these are like my perfect palette, so I end up opening a few of them at a time and using them, you know what I mean? But they're really inexpensive. The quality is incredible. And yeah, again, talk about a bunch of like one shadow looks in this palette. So, so pretty. I'm always amazed at 
The drugstore's ability to do ridiculously good eyeshadows at such a lower price point than high-end ones. It's, it's just amazing. I'm like, what is high-end doing differently then? It really is just like a packaging and name thing because these are very, very high quality. Let's talk bronzer. I'm kind of skipping around. I love this L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Bronzer. I fell in love with this earlier in 2022. And I think the reason this is such a magical powder bronzer for me is that it feels like a powder foundation. So when you're applying this to your bronzer zones, wherever you're wanting to apply it, it adds a little bit of coverage. So you're not just adding a bronzy shade, it's adding a little bit of that like powder foundation-y coverage. I'm like, why is every bronzer not like this? Like, that is so genius. Um, I mean, it's kind of like if you were to just go to a powder foundation line you like and just buy a shade that would work as a bronzer for you. And now I'm like, I really should do that more often. I'm wondering if I bought the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation in a bronzer shade. Like that would be the most next level bronzer. <laughs> I might be doing that because it would have so much coverage. Anyway, it's just so soft and easy to work with. It's just a really nice formula. This shade works well for me. It's 200. That's a really good one. I tend to just really like L'Oreal's bronzers. Blush, this Physicians Formula Butter Believe It Blush, specifically in pink sand. So I've tried the other one that's like mauve something. I like this one even more. This is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It gives me that really light, not light pink, but like airy pink. I can't think of it, but I just love that it's like pink and bronzy and peachy and you just kind of mix it all. And so it ends up being a really nice shade. And I don't think that this would necessarily work for every skin tone, but if you are near my skin tone, I think this would work well for you. It's definitely a go-to that I find myself reaching for and I can just so mindlessly apply it and it always looks really nice. I've definitely found that with blushes, that tends to be what I like, ones that I don't really have to think about. And so this is another one of those, the Milani Romantic Rose Blush. The shade is Romantic Rose. Again, such a soft powder. It's just so easy to apply. This is one I have to force myself to stop using because I would use this every single day. Like a lot of this is like desert island makeup, ride or die makeup, whatever you want to call it. And if I were to do a video where it was like, okay, you're making the makeup bag for the rest of your life. Like this is all you can use forever. One blush, one powder, you know, one whatever. This would be up there for the one blush I would grab. I don't know. There are a few others I'm gonna talk about in the next year end favorites one for my like high end stuff. There's another one I'm gonna talk about that might beat it out, but it would, I don't know. This is so good. So highlighter is the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter. Absolutely supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury one. You can save the money, honestly, you guys. I mean, this is so, so similar. I, I'm trying to think if I've ever been able to really detect a difference. It's so pretty. I feel like you could really put a lot on and build it up, but you can also just put like the amount I did where you can totally see it but it looks still somewhat natural. You know what I mean? I don't think it looks too stripey. It's just really pretty. It gives that like supermodel -y vibe, like, oh wow, her skin's so healthy. Like, what is it? It's, it's this. <laughs> it's so good. So for brows, I did both the Essence Make Me Brow. That's what I'm wearing today. I, this is the kind of brow product I use, so I'm not really mentioning anything other than this kind of brow product because I, I just really haven't used a ton of pencils this year. I haven't used pomade at all, I don't think. So definitely the Essence Make Me Brow is so beautiful. It's, it can pack a punch if you want to deposit a lot of color. If you want a little bit less pigmentation, I would go for the e.l.f. Wow Brow. I feel like day to day, I typically use the e.l.f. one a little bit more, but lately I've been finding myself reach for the Essence one. I've been wanting a little bit more color in my brow. So they're both so similar, but like I said, that's the biggest difference. Less color, more color. I did do a um, like TikTok Instagram reel on the difference between these. So you can see one on one brow, one on the other, if you are like trying to decide which one. So I will link that TikTok below. So liner wise, I don't have a pencil liner to recommend. I do, this is like, it always wins, but the revolution, Renaissance Flick Liquid Liner is still a favorite. I continually repurchase it. It does the blackest line. It is so easy to use. It stays on all day. I just love it. It's so easy. I always do like a baby wing, you know, and I, I there's something about this one that I have though is so hard to open. It's not usually that hard. So it's felt tip, but it's so, so black, so dark, so easy to apply. So big fan. There's a reason I year after year continue to recommend it, continue to repurchase. Definitely my favorite mascara from the drugstore this year, the Essence Volume Stylist. It's what I'm wearing today. This one's getting a little old, so I felt like I had to apply a lot of coats, but it's so, so beautiful right out of the bottle, right when you open it. It's 
very curling, very volumizing, but I don't think it's super clumpy. I think it still kind of brushes through. So big fan of Essence mascaras in general. This is definitely my favorite, favorite, favorite. I've repurchased this like seven times. <laughs> Let us move into lips, shall we? So let's talk about what's on my lips first. So I'm wearing the Milani lipstick in Petal. This is such a beautiful, like kind of, I mean, it's obviously pink, but it's kind of like a deeper bright pink. It's an interesting shade. This formula is so, so easy and comfy. I just love it. They have a lot of different shades. The packaging is gorgeous. I have this shade here called Pleasure that's also really pretty. It's more of like a nude. I reach for this one probably the most out of the ones I have. But yeah, I really love this line. They also have these same looking ones, but with a black ring around it. And those are more like moisturizing. I like those too. They're not like a yearly favorite, but I really like those too. So if you don't want the matte look, try those because they're just as gorgeous. These were the one that when I was like laying in bed a week ago thinking through like, what would be the things that pop into my head of like my favorites from the year? This was one of the first things I thought of. These are the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. These are special. There's something about them because they're kind of like a lip stain mixed with kind of a gloss. Like they're not super like thick and glossy. They're really thin, but they just look beautiful on the lips. They stay really well throughout the day. They're comfy. This is the shade Koi, number 20. I love that pink. And then this one is the shade 15 Peachy. I think I have yet another one. This one is definitely like more sheer the shade. So I do think like shade to shade, the formula is a little bit adjusted, but they're all so pretty and comfy. And anytime I've ever worn these, I get asked what's on my lips, which is interesting because they don't look that special just in a swatch, but there's something about the way they make your lips look that's just really pretty and really flattering, even if you have lined lips like I do. But I think it's that hybrid that it's kind of a stain, kind of a lip gloss, kind of a lipstick, kind of a lip balm. What is all over my hand? I just can't get away. <laughs> But anyway, that hybrid effect of it is why I think that is such a special lip product. These really swept me off my feet <laughs> this year. They look so unassuming. These are the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Ultra Matte Lipstick. So again, I'm not typically a matte lip girl, but I feel like for whatever reason, this was the year of me like falling in love with a few of them. So these are beautiful, especially if you're looking for a really good red lip. So this one is the shade Sweeten Up. It is a beautiful, cool toned red makes your teeth look yellow no <laughs> white it does not make them look yellow <laughs> and then this one is all a buzz it's more of like a taylor swift red you know what i mean more like fire engine red or like more like orange tone but both of them make your teeth look white not yellow and they're just a very comfortable matte like you can even see they're matte but there's like a little bit of like moisture in there just enough to make your lips look really nice and still hydrated so I have some pink shades of this too. I haven't found one of these like in a nude shade that I've fallen in love with. So let me know if you have any recommendations, but this formula is stunning, 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 especially if you want a comfortable matte lip. And I think these Milani ones are also a comfortable matte. This, my lips don't feel dry and parched and weird either. They're very similar, but yeah, they're both really good. This Essence Little Lipstick, I have the shade Freaky, is so, so pretty. I, I just love this shade for every day. It's really comfy. I don't really feel like I need a lip liner with it. This is, I would consider that like a satin because it's a little more moisturizing. It's not totally matte, but it's just a pretty everyday lippy. And I've not really heard anyone talk about this line from Essence. So wanted to bring it up because it is very inexpensive, like very, very inexpensive. And it is so, so nice. Totally like a hidden gem. Uncut gem. <laughs> All right, I need an actual wipe to get some of this off. So, glossy glosses. I am still in love with this line from Physicians Formula. This is their Diamond Plumper. I think I have all three shades that they make. I have a clear one, a pink one, and this peachy one. I love them all. This peachy one has been the one I've reached for the most now because I feel like it's a very wearable shade for what I like. These are slightly plumping, but they're not plumping like in the way like buxom ones are. But it is the way that... <sighs> it catches the light, is so unbelievably beautiful, you guys. And it smells like a white Tic Tac, like that sweet mint, but I, I can't get over the sheen that this has. It is so, so beautiful. Any of the shades are good. This one is called Champagne Cushion Cut. I just love it. I love this formula. It is so comfy. That is like one of my favorite purse lippies, no mirror needed. Another purse lippy I love is the Milani Fruit Fetish. This one smells like 
if you're around my age, I'm in my early 30s. It just smells like Bonnie Bell, Lip Smacker, like all of those things I always used. This is like kind of, it looks like it'd be like bright pink. It's more of a clear, but it does give a pink tint. They have a whole line of them. This is one of my favorites in Strawberry Melon. This is the scent I really like. Um, but it's really pretty. It makes your lips look nice and juicy and it's comfortable. And it's just kind of fun. Like this is one of those like, I don't know. It's just such a fun one. And every time I put it on, it gives me that like rush of like, ah, oh, yes, childhood nostalgia, you know? These, the L'Oreal, I never remember what these are called. It's like they're the L'Oreal Shines. I love these so much. I discovered them, it might have been the year before, but I, I really use them heavily the beginning part of this year. Feathery Fleur is my favorite shade. These are kind of like the Maybelline Superstay vinyls, like the formula, but these are way more shiny. You know what I mean? These aren't, these are just more glossy. That's maybe the better term, but they're so pretty. Again, I feel like I don't need a mirror. They're just really flattering on the lips. This one is the shade Rosy Utopia. I feel like in everything I own like a peachy shade and a pinky shade, but they're both so pretty. They're comfy. I like the applicator. It really like, hugs the lips nicely when you're applying it. I think that's everything. I mean, I have so many more drugstore favorites. I really did have to weed a lot of them out. And I have a lot more that I tried more recently that because it was it was still new to me the past few months, I didn't feel comfortable mentioning it yet for like my yearly faves, you know what I mean? So I'm holding off on some of those. You'll see them sprinkled into very soon. I was gonna say future, but like the near future uh, favorites videos, current faves, drugstore dupes, drugstore hidden gems type videos. So like I said, if you're into that kind of content, definitely subscribe. Basically what that means is my videos will be brought to your attention when you are on your YouTube app or your online, whatever, when I upload new stuff. So I would really appreciate it. And thank you guys for sticking with me this year. If you've been around for this year or multiple years, it means so much to me. And if you have been watching since I started the Jammy Awards, I think it was 20. 13, you guys, let me see. Yeah, 2013, Best in Beauty, the Jammy Awards. Amazing, I can't believe, that was the year I started my channel too. So I've been doing it for nearly, nearly 10 years. I can, that is hard to believe actually. Um, so yeah, if you wanna go back and see little baby Jesse, <laughs> my voice is higher. Like, <laughs> oh boy, I've just been so jaded, you know? <laughs> Anyway, I love you guys so much. Uh, I hope you'll stick around for in a couple days when my next Best in Beauty video goes live. I'm thinking about doing a lifestyle one as well. Let me know if you'd be interested. And that would basically just be everything else in my life. My favorites from the year. It could go from skincare to hair care, but then also to like jewelry from Amazon that I love or things I found at Target this year that I love. You know what I mean? Just like a very big smattering of favorites. So let me know if you'd be interested in that as well. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.